After days of travel, the jungle parts into a small clearing with a stream and a bridge. You begin to cross it, and as you do, the bushes on the other side begin to sway. You ready the phosphate in your hands as a large, slimy creature lumbers out and begins to move towards you. You grind the powder in your hand and release it as a wall of flames gush from the ground. The creature's advance halted immediately as he seems unable or unwilling to pass through the flames. He just stands on the other side, gnashing angrily. Hello friends, and welcome back to the Hall of Craft. So today, I want to tackle a problem that has been existing in our community, and you're all guilty of it. Well, maybe not every single one of you, but most of you are guilty of it. And that's candy corn fire. And it's unacceptable. Nobody even likes candy corns. Why are we painting them? Let's cut it out. So, today I'm going to show you... Why did I do that? Today, I'm going to show you how I like to paint fire. So for this project, I got some Wall of Fire minis from Reaper Miniatures, and I got two packs, they come in three, so I'm going to paint these up because they come in this base uh, tr semi-translucent orange color, but I'd like them to look more realistic. So I'm going to start from the, the top and I'm going to paint the whole thing red, and then I'm going to paint more of the middle section this orange, and then we're going to go into more yellow tones as we get to the core, and then I'll finally highlight it with white, and then I'll come back in with a black and hit the top. When it, painting other things, it's doing the opposite of this, so it's kind of like retraining your brain to paint it in the right direction. Because fire is a light source. So I'm going to start with this phoenix red for the whole thing. And then I have a lava orange that I'm going to hit just the middle area with. And then I have a marigold yellow. And a golden glow and then white and black. These are all Reaper paints as well. So just loading up the airbrush with the Phoenix Red, I'm going to give a pretty generous coat to the, the whole thing. Not too heavy because I don't want it to run. And the miniatures themselves are already orange, so you don't have to go too crazy here. So now I'm going back in with the lava orange, and I'm not hitting as much of the entire miniature. The transition between these two colors is pretty subtle. Okay, so now we got our yellows, and we're hitting just the middle. Starting to see that nice transition come out here. I'm going to build that up a little bit. The paint always goes on brighter than it dries, so keep that in mind while you're working on them. Do a couple thin coats of that, and then set it aside to dry. Okay, so once that's dry, I'm going to come back in with the golden glow, and I'm just going to hit the core of these fires. Don't want to overdo this because it'll be a pretty powerful effect. And in between colors, I'm just mixing what I have left in the pot of my airbrush. So I'm taking that kind of dirty paint color that's left in and uh, mixing in my new color to help the transition. So 
So now I've mixed in some white with what was left in the pot of the golden glow, and I'm just hitting the middles and the bottom. This would be where the fire is the hottest, so it would be the brightest. And I kind of start flicking it up a little bit, just to help the transition. Again, it, it'll dry darker than it goes on. Okay, so once those are dry, I got I've cleaned out my pot entirely and I've put some black in there. And I'm just going to hit the tips of these. I don't want it to be too crazy, but this will really help the contrast pop on these. Adding the black is going to make your brights look brighter. I'm just taking my time with these, building it up a little slowly. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to come back with the Phoenix Red, and I'm just going to dry brush these to try and hit all the edges. Bring back some of that detail of the sculpt. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple paint job, but it's pretty effective. And you could apply this technique to any any fire you paint. It doesn't have to be these wall of fire miniatures. This would be a general technique for torches or anything like that. And that's it. That's all there is to it. You can do it yourself. I know you can. Believe in you. You're beautiful. You can do anything you put your mind to. And that includes painting fire. So, I did this with an airbrush, you can do this with a brush, it's not so hard, but you will achieve better results with an airbrush because it's the superior tool for blending and transitions. I sat on the purchase for a long time, I wish I got it sooner, it's amazing. Do it if you gotta, do it if you can. And the best part of it all is it saves me from going out in these cold Canadian winters to spray things with a rattle can. And that's a huge boom! Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.